Mark Rogers, TV on college football, and our thoughts on the update involving Ohio State running back Carlos Hyde. A couple weekends ago, Hyde was involved in a situation outside a Columbus, Ohio downtown bar involving a woman. He was a person of interest in the case involving assault and battery. At that point, Ohio State dismissed Hyde from the football team pending further investigation. Okay, now the charges have been dropped by the woman. The case is closed by police. Coach Urban Meyer came out today and announced the suspension of Hyde for the first three games, at least the first three games of the 2013 season, pending the surveillance video. So although the case has been closed, uh, the police have reported that the surveillance video will be released at a later date. At that point, I would expect Urban Meyer to review the surveillance video, which will be seen by all of us and will be up to public judgment as to the severity of Hyde's actions against this woman. And it will be up to Coach Urban Meyer to possibly extend the suspension of three games or keep it at three games, depending on where the university, the administration, and Meyer stand on his actions. Here are my thoughts in regards to the discipline aspect and also the football aspect. In regards to discipline, especially in the aftermath of the Aaron Hernandez situation, the former University of Florida tight end who played under Urban Meyer, Meyer has at times had the, um, the reputation for being a bit soft on his football players, putting football first discipline, second, third, or seventh and uh, wanting his football players to be on the field regardless of activity off the field and being able to play in the big game. I believe Meyer at Ohio State, whether this be uh, something that he has initiated or has been impressed upon him by his family or the administration or the athletic uh, department, certainly has talked a tougher game uh, since he's come to Ohio State few indications of that is that certainly when Urban Meyer took the job um, and certainly being asked about these type of incidents involving college football players and their actions in particular against women, he said that uh, players will need to treat women with respect and uh, involving this case in particular that once he finds out a few more details, i.e. the surveillance footage, that uh, Hyde's three-game suspension could be extended to fulfill additional obligations. We'll find out what that means as well. Uh, last weekend at the Big Ten at Media Days, uh, Coach Urban Meyer said that, uh, that uh, Ohio State will deal with these issues as harshly or harsher than any other school in college football. Again, the perception in the past, specifically at Florida, where the magnifying glass was as large as it's been for Meyer uh, up until that point and now reaching Ohio State is that Durbin Meyer has been a little bit soft on the discipline of his football players and I think he wants to change that perception at Ohio State and he's certainly sending a large signal to this point in this Carlos Hyde case and he certainly will have to deal with the Bradley Roby case as well. The Ohio State star cornerback, uh, that's still under investigation, his actions from a couple weekends ago in Indiana. All right, let's tackle this from a football perspective. Carlos Hyde will be missed as an Ohio State running back. He is the best on the team, there is no doubt. Uh, in other video posts, please check them out. We talked about Hyde's bruising style. He's a bulldozer. Uh, he refuses to go down and is typically not brought down by one defender. He came within 30 yards of rushing for 1,000 yards, and that's despite Ohio State not being able to play in a Big Ten championship game and not playing in a bowl game or the BCS championship game and Hyde also missing two and a half other games. So he missed about four and a half games that he could have played, still gained just under 1,000 yards, and 16 rushing touchdowns, 17 total touchdowns for the Buckeyes in going 12-0 in 2012. And if you'd watch the games, it speaks so much more in Hyde's uh, corner than the actual statistics because against Michigan, against Wisconsin, certainly the last two games of the season, in other games against Michigan State, when Ohio State in very close football games needed a punishing presence in the ground game, it was Carlos Hyde that took the ground game on his back and took a lot of defenders on his back and took them for 6, 8, and 10 yards at a clip when everybody knew that Carlos Hyde was going to run the football. Okay, the opportunity here for Ohio State is twofold. Number one, 
is that Briante Dunn and also Rod Smith will get more carries. They both rushed for about 150 to 200 yards last season as a Hyde's replacement down the stretch in football games that were decided. Uh, Hyde was certainly in there for the important carries, the important downs. They mopped up, and so their statistics look similar to Hyde's at 5.2 and 6.7 yards per carry, but don't fool yourselves. These were against the... Uh, the lesser teams on Ohio State's schedule during mop-up duty against uh, second and third team defenders at, at times uh, for the Ohio State uh, Buckeyes in 2012. Let's also keep in mind that running backs get beat up, especially with the running style of Carlos Hyde. So this could be a blessing in disguise as Carlos Hyde takes off at least the first three games for Ohio State. And we shall see if that suspension extends past three games. But Hyde misses the first three games. He could be a fresher more ready running back, more healthy running back down the stretch against uh, the Buckeyes' Big Ten foes uh, than he would be normally uh, getting beat up for 12 games and 13 games if the Buckeyes make the Big Ten championship game as expected in a bowl game, the Rose Bowl or a BCS championship game. Hyde could be much fresher, much healthier than he would be otherwise. So it could be a blessing in disguise in finding out that Rod Smith can or cannot play on this level, and carry the load. Same with Briante Dunn. Same with Jordan Hall, who's going to be mixed around in a slot position, kind of a Percy Harvin type role, but will get carries as well in Hyde's absence especially. So we find out about Dunn and Smith especially, and we also uh, have less wear and tear on Mr. Carlos Hyde down the stretch for Ohio State. So again, could be a blessing in disguise, and also have to take into consideration that Ohio State's first three opponents are Buffalo, San Diego State, and Cal. On the surface, they should have no issues in those three games, but at the same time, San Diego State has been awfully tough on some uh, higher echelon BCS uh, competition in recent years, and also last season. Cal was 3-9 and nine at the end of the year, but in Game 4, came to Columbus and gave the Buckeyes all they could handle in Columbus, 35-28. Ohio State's got to go out to the West Coast and take on the Cal Golden Bears, so... Hyde could be missed in that one, but you would think that the Buckeyes, regardless of Hyde's status, and at this point going to miss that game due to suspension, Ohio State should be, should be okay in defeating Cal. So Hyde's health is a factor here, and uh, taking less wear and tear carrying the football because of the three-game suspension or more, and we find out about Dunn and Smith. My thoughts on the football and the discipline at this point, it seems to match the crime three games. But again, depending on when that surveillance footage shows us, it could be more than three games and certainly could be deservedly so. Would love to hear what you have to say. Chime in on Ohio State football and this Carlos Hyde situation right here on Mark Rogers TV.